You have not lived today until you've done something for someone who can never repay you. This is well understood when you visit Joy Divine Children's Organization located in the heart of Langokuba in the neighboring Madari slums. Frederick tells us how this became a routine. I work with Joy Divine Children's Organization uh, that began in the year 2000. And uh, today you are with us here at Joy at um, Langokuba for one of our outreach programs. The initial children that we rescued from the streets, courtesy of the Nairobi uh, City Council by then, around 2003, all got to go to the highest levels of education. That was high schools, some joined colleges, and eventually others joined universities. So our facility was empty. And we thought that why not do much more? So we partnered with the uh, St. Jesus Catholic Church, and we started a feeding program for close to a thousand uh, street families from uh, Madare, Mlangokubwa, Isli area and from the city center. Not only does the organization strive to get the street children food, but they ensure these children having a feeling of family setting. We, we started with this program, we became practical, we came on the streets, we did a feeding program and new partners came on board. So we've had partners who partnered with us to do medical outreaches that has not only benefited the street families, but also the immediate community. So, and we were able to uh, link in the Nairobi County Health Department, and it did the medical camp with them. So Joy Divine facilitated getting the drugs, getting the allowances for the doctors, for the, for the clinical officers, and uh, the community benefited. And this was a way of us partnering with also friends who've supported the education of the Joy Divine children. So they also got to see that we're doing something in the community. So they partnered with us and uh, uh, we've done at least three or four major medical camps in the community. So we do basic things like deworming, uh, cream, skin creams for skin diseases, we do cleaning of the wounds and um, ENT and many other things that the doctors find fit to treat the community. So we also do sports outreaches in that we bring the whole community together. In that uh, there's uh, a good rapport within the community and especially during the holidays, we keep the young people busy. So there's, uh, we, we're able to give things like uh, soccer gear, soccer balls, trophies, and just have a wonderful time with the, with the community. Michael Mwangi, a student and a volunteer of Joy Divine's Children's Organization, explains how they carry out these services religiously. What usually happens here is uh, we are a group of students from various universities across Nairobi. And what we do is uh, we meet here every Saturday and do a, a, a proper feeding program now for the street families. We no longer refer to them as street families after doing it for over six years now. We now refer to them as uh, VIPs because they're very important people. It's just that they don't have that uh, opportunity, you know, to explore and be whoever they want to be in this life, yeah? So now, uh, what we usually do here once we get here in the morning is uh, we first start with a morning devotion in the morning. After the morning devotion, we get into the hall behind us and uh, serve breakfast with them. We share breakfast, which is mostly it's porridge, uh, bread, and sometimes when the fans allow, we also add an egg or uh, some sausages or smokies uh, in the mix. So after breakfast, ask the volunteers who, uh, who actually fund the feeding program. What we do is we divide ourselves into different groups to do various activities. And the activity number one which we usually start with is uh, Shulemtani. With Shulemtani is teaching them basics in uh, education, from simple arithmetic in addition, subtraction, how to even write their names. After we are done with Shulemtani, uh, some of the volunteers now go into doing first aid. We do first aid through their open wounds because they constantly come with, to us every Saturday with uh, open wounds be it from fighting, maybe accidents, wakidandia malaria and stuff like that. So we come, we nurse those uh, open wounds and stuff like that. And then also it's during that time that we are able, you know, to sit down with them on one-on-one -on -one basis, get to know how their week was, uh, what are the, some of the challenges that they are going through and blah, blah, blah. And then another gr group, another group now from our volunteers, 
they go down to the slums where we've rented some of the girls some houses. We have some some of the girls that we usually assist, or rather who are street families. Is they also most of them are HIV positive. There are those with young kids and they are young, blah 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 and stuff like that. So when we go there where we've rented for them some houses, it's us getting to know how they are doing in the houses. And then because also it's a form of rehabilitation for them, it's also uh, a place where we get to know how far are they uh, away from now getting off there, the houses that we are renting for them, for them to now go into their own houses and continue with the small scale businesses that usually start for them. Like for instance, today here we are with the Mso. She also used to be among the girls who used to be in those houses, but now she's gone off at the houses, Kabisa, she's living on her own. She comes to help us out uh, once in a while in the feeding program. She's also, we're also using her to inspire these other guys. So it's not just feeding program alone. It's, it's the food that we use to bring them. And then now with the food, we can, we, after the food, or before we even serve them the food, we're able to identify those ones who are serious and they are willing to get off the streets and join schools. There is immense power when a group of people with similar interests gets together to work towards the same goal. I represent uh, an organization that is called Love for Child Association. Uh, I am the welfare coordinator over there with a group of other friends. And uh, Love for Child Association LOCA is, as you see here today, uh, helping a lot of street kids, a lot of uh, street families by helping to see how we can work together and uh, how we can uh, help to have uh, them do their feeding, how to give them a better life. But for starters, for today, what we are saying is we want to give them a, a decent meal. So local members, along with uh, Joy Divine, today we have met up and we have said that let us get together and give uh, all these street families uh, a decent food. So many of our uh, friends outside have a lot of uh, clothes which they don't wear and they will just throw them away. But when you come over here, you'll see so many of these um, families not having decent clothes. So I would urge all our friends that if you are having clothes and rather than throwing them away, get in touch with us. We would want all these families to come and have a decent uh, clothes to wear. At the same time, you'll see so many of these kids uh, not having a decent meal and outside sometimes we are throwing this food away be, be it in churches temples or functions marriages sometimes the food just goes to waste Nelson Mwangi tells us why this partnership is important to love for child association we were invited here by the organizers of uh, this uh, program to come and uh, see what they usually do and how we can be able to assist them so that's why we and our members and some of our family members came on board to come and assist them. We are here, we came here in the morning, we've done some breakfast with them, we are almost doing lunch with them and uh, we'll also have a moment with them so that we can talk to them and see how we can be able to uh, inspire them and how we can be able to instill hope in them. This is what we usually do um, every month with uh, uh, diff other different programs and this is one of uh, the programs that we're having today. So basically that is the reason as to why we came Amen. here in Mulango Kubo to come and assist where we can. Basically we realize that uh, even starting, for, actually even in the, it is biblical that um, in our regions and in our societies we'll be having poor people and uh, the Bible recognizes that. So it would be wrong for us to sit down and assume that uh, there's nothing that we can be able to do. So uh, we realized as a, as a young group, where how can we be able to, uh, to inspire one another and how we can also be able to share the little things that we, we, we get here uh, to ourselves, how we can be able to share it uh, with the rest of the community. So uh, we got inspired by that, that there are so many people out there whom we are living around with, but we don't realize that they are needy. So that's why we're here today and in many other forums that we usually hear, we usually have. Uh, we usually have contributions that we usually make every, every, every month towards some of this program. That's why we are getting inspiration uh, to come and assist them. And then also listening to some, uh, some, some success stories from uh, a place like, uh, like Joy Divine, it really gives us so much hope that there's a lot we need to do as a society. There's a lot we need to do, especially as the young people, to ensure that we can be able to assist 
and eradicate some of these menaces that uh, we are experiencing in our, in our country. Rita Mdoni, a mother of four, tells us how this program has impacted her life. I was in the street in 2006, and I was in the street in 2006. But at the time, I was able to get out of here. 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 Ivo ivo wakiangalia mwenye anaenda kuchange kuna ile nyumba yenye wamekomboa ya wasichana ukienda kwa hiyo nyumba wanajaribu kuangalia mwenye ana change kama ni usafi upande wa usafi wanaangalia wakiona huu unabadilika at least wanakupeleka nyumba kingine na mtoto ni kama saa hii najua kujifuria nguo najua kujipikia chakula najua niko njaa ile muda yenye huko unakula chochoto unafikiria tu chupa ya biere au nanga apetetia chakula kwa sababu huko na apetetia chakula niko na mtoi na mpeanga chakula ile kidogo yenye tu nimepata Angel Warira, another beneficiary, narrates how she ended up on the streets. I was going to the street. I was going to the I Nikuwa sojo sana nimesha kuwasiki sana nikitembea katika nimenyongwa. Kunyongwa ikamshitika tola wangu. Nsongo wa pili baba yake alikuwa anaitwa Peter Mwaneki. Wakati nilikuwa na mimba ya miezi tisa kenda kujifungua. Tuka kwa matana tukurudi siku muonanga tena mpaka wa leo hii. Nilikuwa na fast bone wangu. Nilikuwa na shia yangu sana. Wakaniambia sio mzuri kwa shamtoto nje. Anyeshewe jua na zangu njeka. Katila mshamba kachini kwa nyumba. Na inye ni kafule ya sana, nikola ni maripazuri. Na liposa kwa kujia ni kabadirika. Sikuwa na oganga, sikuwa na fuanga. Hata kukia mtuto ni shida, mwenye kukia ni shida. Na kula tu za mborea. Kisha jokwa kwa mtuto wangu, kwa msafi. Yona tu na improve. Na kisa nika ya ningeomba, kazi tu domini ngetaka. This program has not biased those that need special attention in this society as well. Nikao na au jamaa anaitwa Maora. Akakuja akaniambia kuna ana usaidizi na sapata ndali ni kwa natembea na wili kimini crutches. Akanionea room akana akana akaniletea ngari. Are you wondering how you can help out with the little you have? Here is an opportunity whereby Call us as loka and we would try and collect that food and come and give it to the people you see whereby oh, they can come yeah, and yeah. give this food and uh, decent food so they can get and something to eat. Uh, we are carrying out an uh, Elimu policy whereby uh, the kids who have uh, performed well are able to have a decent uh, education. So we, as, as loka we would vet them. We would see if they come, which kind of background they are coming from. And from there now, we try and see if we can enroll them and give them a better life to lead. Despite all the efforts put to ensure that this program is sustainable, they have had their share of challenges. These are some of the challenges we faced is like extrajudicial killing, killings where we've buried a number of the young people who have previously on the streets. And not only because of the killings, but also illness, uh, they are exposed to the elements, so they easily get ill and they succumb to their, to, their, to their diseases and we are burying young people. We didn't sign up for this. We hoped that we'd rather buy school boxes and place these young people in schools. It is beyond our capability. So unless higher authorities, if they seriously and are deliberate to tackle it, we'll still have a big number of these young boys and girls addicted and the, that will be beyond us. The other challenge is mental, mental illness. A big number of these young people are, because of abusing drugs, because of their traumatized from their past experiences, are mentally unstable, ment they've got mental illnesses, and the, unless we get professionals, counselors, and uh, we take them to pro proper rehabilitation centers, we can't do much about it. 
This is the greatest desire that Frederick wishes to see come true. We don't want to give food for the sake of giving food. We want food to be the key for the, uh, these children to take in the next chance or opportunity. That could be education, that could be job placement, that could be reintegration back to their families across the country. It's been a challenge, but we've had very good friends and partners who are, who are ready to facilitate and invest in terms of food support, in terms of the cooking equipment, in terms of uh, even companies and corporates who've stand up and partnered with us for us to continue doing this. Our only challenge is having a security in terms of us facility that we know that we can do this uninterrupted and with the goodwill. We already have the goodwill of the community, we already have the goodwill of the young people, but can we get this support moving forward? Can the authorities not see us as competitors, but as facilitators and people who are ready just to make a difference in our community as young people? We've done this for, for such a long time, almost for, for pro bono. We are willing to bring in more people to support this. So, but our goal is to see, we don't want these children to remain on the streets any day, one day longer. Our goal is to see them either back with their families, back in a school, back in a proper rehab center, they get the rehab for drug abuse, or just job placement. Keep them busy, keep them engaged, or for them to do sports and things that uh, they are good with in terms of their talents and their skills. So that's just our desire. Giving is not just about making a donation, it's about making a difference. Next time when you meet a poor or a needy person, consider giving it a thought.